Hi folks, back here with Mr. Moss again. He reminds us that every now and then in the trailer park we need to go backwards and I'm reminding you Mother's Day State Capitol be there. Anyway, what the heck we have here? Well, we've got a great step backwards into 1740, back when the militias meant something. This is a copy of a British um, sea service gun that they use. They call them a, a musketoon. Most people know them as a blunderbuss. This is flint and steel. This is one of the most primitive ignition systems on a firearm we have. They used to say as long as God made rocks and chickens poop, you could always shoot. They make the niter out of the chicken. They leached the chicken manure and they made the niter and the flint, of course, they ignited the, the, the mixture. Bottom. So as long as you had a, a source of rocks and a source of niter, you could continue your existence. Maybe all right. Give us a little demonstration on how this thing works. All right. First of all, there's a, a steel frizzin here. Yes, sir. And there's a flint inside the jaws. You pull the trigger, the flint hits the steel, makes a spark. Spark goes into a powder charge through a hole, ignites the main charge, and fires out whatever you want to put in there. That hole in the breech is over an inch in diameter. So oh. you can load anything you want from roofing nails to buckshot. <laughs> Not that we suggest you do this kind of thing, but <laughs> for reenactors, this is a uh... I understand you have participated in some reenacting events. We carried this at the Battle of San Jacinto here about uh, two, three weeks ago. Is and right? uh, we fought Santa Ana's, Santa Ana's army and of course we won again for the 136th time. This is a unique looking powder measure you have here. Yeah? I made the powder measure out of a piece of deer horn and a piece of mesquite. And it holds exactly three ounces of black powder. Three is, ounces of black powder? Which is the recommended load for this gun. Powder in the big one here is double F. You notice, folks, he's also got the official, uh, looks like a captain, sea captain's hat there or something. Navy captain. These guns were popular on ships because they used them by the captains to quell mutinies. If they had a mutiny on board, I guarantee you could clear a quarter deck quite easily with that gun. We'll put on the proper eye gear for the period. And of course, you got to have the proper hat for the period, too. Mr. Moss could just, there we go. Okay, I'll just step back here. We'll watch this, folks. Three ounces of double F black powder. Now, to hold all that in there, we have cardboard wads made out of one inch cardboard disc. I hammer them out of a piece of cardboard. That holds the powder in. Next, we're going to use seven and a half inch buck or seven and a half inch birdshot, and it holds three ounces. Also, it's three ounces of powder, three ounces by volume of birdshot but it's really kind of harsh to shoot that way, so we're just going to put about two-thirds in there. Kind of harsh to shoot that way, what do you mean? It kicks like a dog? Absolutely. And we'll put another wad on top of that to hold the, uh, hold the, the powder from, or the, uh, the shot from rolling out. The place here. Now, in the reenactment, they won't let us carry ramrods, so it's just loose powder. That way somebody doesn't get speared with a ramrod in the heat of the battle. Okay. And that, that has happened, by the way. Safety rules in the... Uh... Yep. All right, at half cock, we use a small priming horn. And this has got 4F in it, as opposed to 2F, or musket powder. We're going to pour into the small amount. And we, basically, we're going to cover the pan, and the pan is what holds the powder. This is your priming powder. Yes, sir. Now we're going to put our frizzing back over the, the cover, yes. and we're all set to go. Now, sir, with that, with that covered up like that, uh, can you, how, how rough can you be with this? I heard that in, like, rain and all, it was almost useless. In the rain, it would get in there, and that 
priming load would wind up being negated. So they would have to reprime their, reprime it, they pour out all the bad, they take their dry powder and redo it. Before they went into combat, they would always reprime their weapons. Okay, now when you had the pad closed, does that make it, you can hold it straight up or lean it over and it won't fall out? Or? That's the theory of the whole thing. Okay. Th they have a pan that has a, a drain on it. Some of the uh, more quality flintlocks are water resistant where the water will run over. And a lot of times they carried a little bag over the top of their their firing mechanism to keep the water out of it. But basically it's very primitive ignition. Sometimes it'll go, sometimes it won't. They usually carried a knife or a sword in case, it, in did, case, huh? in case it didn't function. Well, let's step back. He's gonna try us out a shot here. All right. We cleared our target. There's nothing downrange except for the enemy troops coming. Full cock. You wanna put it up to your shoulder, it's your business. There she goes. And remember, folks. Remember, folks. ACAC, -AC, check it out. Channels 10, 11, 16. And Mother's Day, be there. Or all this could be gone to these communist friends you have, like Chucky Charles Schumer and Diane Feinstein and all them commie. We won't use that kind of language, but you know what I mean. Be there on Mother's Day. Take my word for it and keep your eye on ACAC, -AC, channels 10, 11, 16. Till then, from the trailer park on the Rio Grande. I love Austin Access Cable. Where else can you learn to do stuff like this? Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> Now that's having fun. <laughs> that's <a cool> chart. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the holy shit part? <laughs> get his feet coming off the ground. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> now go, go down there and look and see what you did to that thing. Holy shit. Oh. <laughs>